Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back, we're live. We are young talents making way only here on FinTech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, I'm your host. And every Tuesday we keep an eye on the future with our most brilliant school students as we talk about their science projects. And today it's all about technology and particularly a very powerful board which apparently is from Italy like I am and is also really open sourcing our imagination, Arduino. So please welcome Welcome uh, Anson Liang and Jonathan Lin from uh, Kwananakoa Middle School here in Honolulu. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, so, um, what is Arduino actually? Well, Arduino is Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. Well, Arduino is a microcontroller that is um, integrated onto a um, a circuit board, and the circuit board can be programmed to do certain functions that you want it to do. Ah, oh, okay, excellent. And so, uh, basically, you can. What kind of functions can you can you have it do it? Uh, um, the Arduino can do multiple functions that you want. In this case, my project was all about motion sensors, so I created motion sensors using Arduino. And um, the Arduino, the way it works is through logic gates, and um, it would be very good for me if we had this, the first slide. Okay, maybe let's have our first slide up so we can see. Um, um, okay. Of mine. Yeah. Uh, the, yes. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay. So um, the um, it uses um the Arduino uses logic gates, and through logic gates, it um it uses boolean function that performs operations on one or more binary inputs, and it produces one binary output. It, um, the three basic gates are the AND gate, OR gate, and the NOT gate. So the AND gate is the one on the top left, and the boolean function for that would be um x times y equals z so and um not to mention the um logic gates only has two numbers it can represent so in this case it would represent zero or one so if um x is one and y is zero z zero times one is zero so z would equal to zero so this yeah. seems to be uh very complicated if you're yeah. you know explaining this uh, um, but uh, it's a very powerful tool and so it can give uh, all sorts of uh, sensing and and other things what did you do with this uh, arduino Anderson? okay so um for my arduino i built this temperature sensor for my science fair project which was to build a portable phone charger so first i used lithium ion batteries for my phone charger because i thought that since there are so many phone, different kinds of phone chargers out there, I thought I could make one that was cheaper and more efficient. Mm. So then I started by using um, a lithium-ion battery. So the way a lithium-ion battery works is that it uses lithium, which is the third element on the periodic table. Um, it's highly reactive because it has only one electron on its outermost shell. So then to stabilize, because since it's highly reactive, it's also very unstable. So in order to stabilize, this atom loses electron, loses an electron to become more stable. It turns into lithium ion, which powers the battery. So this is basically the, how a battery charger works. Yes. Yeah? Okay. And you used Arduino to build one of these. Yes, to help yeah. me with the portable well, phone charger. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, and you, uh, Jonathan, yes. uh, what did you do with with Arduino? Oh well, for me, yeah. What I did with Arduino. It's was a, you mentioned it's a motion detector, but um, yes. we mentioned earlier that uh, you know it seems um, a little complicated to actually learn all this. How long did it take for you, for example, to oh. to actually? Uh, so the Arduino, since we had to code it, I had to learn how to code. And um, coding wasn't that simple as I thought it was. And it took me around uh, maybe a week to learn it to the fullest. Only one week? Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. And you, Anson, so you, you mentioned earlier that you actually um, uh, studied together. Uh, how did you learn Arduino? That's a... um, so we watched, we went online on the internet. We looked up articles on how to code for this Arduino, and we also looked at YouTube videos. Because it, if I understand it well, it's an open source uh, device. Yes. Yeah. So basically, it's a board that can do sorts of things. It can yes. control other sensors or anything. 
but you can actually, all the, the, the programming, the languages and the components, it's all available for everyone who wants to improve and, and work on this, yeah? Uh, yes, that's one of the best things about Arduino. You don't have to buy these kind of codes, you can just look up online. Wow, libraries. okay. So let's get uh, more, let's talk a little bit more about your science projects and actually what you did. And maybe let's have a, a slide for you up, Anson, oh, yes. so you can tell us more about the, um, okay, so these, here we're looking at, um, what are we looking at here? <laughs> so the first picture on the left is my homemade portable phone charger. Right, yeah. Okay, and then on the right is the temperature sensor that allows me to sense whether the lithium ion battery, which is covered in black on the right of the first picture, um, it, whether there's an increase in temperature, which means it overheats, which could cause a safety Oh, so we need the temperature sensor for um, safety, for hazards yes. in terms of, because the battery could overheat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were telling me a funny story about uh, oh, yes. the beginning when you, yeah. yeah. So um, before I did my homemade portable phone charger, I did some pilot testing to see which types of batteries I should choose. So then in doing so, I tried making smaller portable phone chargers. So then I used lithium polymer, lithium ion, and alkaline batteries. But when I was trying to solder using the soldering iron, it I didn't solder properly, so then it caused a short circuit, and then it caught on fire. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, what problems were you trying to address uh, by building this? I guess you wanted to make it small. You wanted to uh, uh, for the fo for a phone charger. Um, the problem was that. Um, most portable phone chargers range from fifteen dollars to one hundred thirty dollars. Those right. portable phone chargers, but then when I made mine, I used five dollars to create. Wow! So in terms of uh, cost efficiency, yes. we were talking about. Wow! Okay. Maybe let's have a, a, another slide for you up oh, so yes. we can see more. Uh, okay. So here we're talking. About, this is the portable charger. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there are three main components. We have the five volt step up charger, which increases the voltage of my lithium ion batteries because they normally it only provides 3.7 volts but in order to charge a smartphone you need 5 we volts. need 5 okay yes. so then that would increase the voltage the second part would be the switch which would allow me to turn my portable phone charger on and off that's right we need to turn it off <laughs> and then of course the most important the lithium ion batteries that's right okay okay so, um, uh, Jonathan, as yeah. part of your um, motion detection uh, sensor making and everything, what did you do? Okay, so for my science project, I wanted to engineer an, a DIY efficient motion sensor that can detect motion and uh, to know whenever there's an intruder. And when there's one, it would send me a messages through SMS known as short messaging system and it will make a alarming sound that will hopefully intimidate them to not um, break through. So this is something we all need in our homes. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, um, so why did you actually uh, choose uh, to make this sensor with Arduino? Oh, uh, Because since World War II, there has been an increase in security, and therefore I wanted to solve, um, wanted to find a solution to the problem. So my teacher, she came up to me and she told me um, for my school project, I should um, implement a um, something called a Arduino, which we mentioned, and the Arduino I then integrated into my project. That's right. Maybe let's see. Uh, let's have a one slide for you up, so we can see uh, something more about uh, what you did. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, these are um, one of the two sensors I I use. Um, on the left being the ultrasonic motion sensors. That's the motion sensor. Yes. Okay. And the right is the PIR motion sensor, known as the passive infrared sensor. Did you use both of them? Uh, yes, so um, I wanted to compare which sensors was the best before I um, built the actual motion the sensor that can do whatever I wanted to do. So um, um, the way I w figured out which one I should use was through testing it through accuracy and the maximum distance it could sense something. So for the ultrasonic sensor on the left, it could detect um, stuff 100% accurate of the time so it will never miss something by using its sound waves. On the other hand, the passive infrared sensor can only sense things 70% of the time. Hmm, but do they have a range yeah. limit? Yeah, okay. Okay, so for the ultrasonic motion sensor, it can sense up to 246.06 centimeters, while the passive infrared sensor, it can sense up to 306.4 centimeters. Okay, so basically, if we put it in a room or something, it yes. can detect 
when uh, people get get in or out. Yeah, okay. But maybe let's have one more slide up so we can see more and learn more about. Uh, uh, okay, so this is the actual board, the yes. Arduino board. So yeah. I ended up choosing the ultrasonic motion sensor because it was more accurate, and you always want it to be accurate rather than having much range. So I then built it. So this is the ultrasonic motion sensor and um, connected to the Arduino. So that microcontroller on the left is called the Arduino. I use the Uno R3, which is the um, basic form of the Arduino. So you, 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 you tested both of the sensors, the motion sensors, and, um, and you chose this one. But um, the infrared, uh, yes. does it work at night, for example, or? Yes, it works. Um, the way the infrared sensor sends stuff is through infrared radiation. Um, and That's right, yeah. Yes, infrared radiation is the heat that comes off of your body. So um, it, could, it won't detect like maybe an object like a box that you want it, don't want it to detect. Uh, but um, humans, which you want it to detect, it will detect. Because of the temperature that yes. we have. Okay, okay. So, uh, Anson, um, we, we talked a little bit about the, the coding uh, and how you actually learned how to code very fast and everything. What are the um, opportunities that we have with this, uh, uh, um, with this uh, hardware and software, which is Arduino? What other things uh, can we do, for example? Um, so, since this Arduino Uno or Arduino is basically a small computer, we could use it to do many of the functions that our normal computers can do, inclu including calculations, sens sensors like we did, or we could do other scientific things that we could replace computers with, and we can explore these different options. And we can miniaturize things as yes. well. Okay, uh, maybe let's see some of your uh, some more slides which you brought oh. us, so we can see okay. and we can. Uh, this is your uh, sensor schematics. Yes. That's the schematics for the phone charger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not the phone charger, but the sensors. That the, the the okay. Yeah. Um, how. Um, so this is the the temperature sensor that it comes with it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, how how did you learn actually how to see these are all the cablings we're looking mm -hmm. at and everything you connected the um, yes. yeah so then I looked up online tutorials about each each separate component and then I found a way to um, integrate all of that onto one device together yeah yes. so basically uh, the board is like uh, the main computer that controls yes. everything and then you can attach to this board uh, sensors or build sensors yes. as you did mm -hmm. and you uh, you control it with this coding language yes. yeah so how does it actually work uh, so the coding language is C or C++ so oh, okay we, so it's C++ okay. yeah so then like how Jonathan said we, we code we first set up the codes, and then, and then we code for the specific Arduino device. And then the Arduino, it takes this code. It uses the input-output system. And then it sends out one specific output, and then it tells the components what to do. Let's see. Maybe let's see the, the coding slides. Yes. So OK, so this is the, wow. <laughs> what are we looking at okay. here? So the first column on the left yeah. is the setup. So it tells the Arduino what it, to prepare for what I'm gonna tell what it's gonna tell the other components to do. Okay. So then the first column is the setup. The second half, the first half of the second column is for the DHT, which is the temperature sensor. So it's it, right. Yes. So it codes for this temperature sensor. The second half of the second column is for the LCD display, which displays the temperature and the humidity of that specific area. The third column is about the LEDs. So if it, the Arduino senses an increase in temperature. It will light up red, green, or yellow, or right. red, green, or white. Um, not sorry, not green. I mean blue. So if it senses a decrease in temperature, it would turn blue, meaning cold. If it's normal, it'd be white at room temperature, and if it's red, it's overheating. Which would it, 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 this sounds very interesting, especially with this uh, you know particular coating and that you can miniaturize and even make it. Uh, um, cost efficient in terms of cost and everything for phone chargers with this uh, particular hazard devices. But um, how um, would you would you see this uh, like in the shops or something that we would you know be able to buy or? Um, well, so um, in Hawaii, unfortunately, these um, 
um, Arduino are usually sold in Radio Shack, but now in Hawaii, there's no more Radio Shacks. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, I know. therefore, um, you have to order them online. You can order them online, yes. okay, and then you can build all of these, uh, you know, sensors and everything. Okay, so we're learning here with uh, Anson and Jonathan about uh, the sensors that they built for the science fair, and uh, we're gonna take a short break, but we'll be back soon for more. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. And we're back, we're live. We're young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. Today, it's all about technologies. We're talking about this board software and hardware called Arduino, which can really has a variety of applications. And we're learning from uh, Jonathan and Anson from Kwa Nanakoa uh, Middle School here in Hawaii. Welcome, welcome. So. Um, I guess you uh, created these uh, sensors, so these uh, for uh, state fair for the for our Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair. How was? And I understand that you're also VIP for for this uh, uh, fair. Yeah, we have a finalist. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I was the finalist for the state fair. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, I didn't get first, second, or third, but I got um what is supposed to be fourth place in the state. Not only, but um, I got best of category. So, no, but that, that's a really, and, and you are second place. Yeah, second winner. place in category. Yeah. In category, yes. wow, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, how was this experience? I mean, how was sharing your research, your sensors, and representing uh, Kwananakoa Middle School in front of the state? Or okay. answer, um, yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty amazing experience where you see all these other people, all these other students around you who are also doing science, who are also chasing their passions. And then we could see other experts, which are the adults and the judges. They give you feedback, and we can share to them what we learn, and we can also learn from them. So, uh, Jonathan, what's the, the, the most useful thing that you learned as part of this experience? Oh. So the most useful thing I learned was that um, as long as you try hard, you can uh, um, you can accomplish your goal. Because when I was uh, in um, only doing science fair for a school, I never thought that it would actually um, allow me to go to states. Um, but with the help of um, Bebby Davis, um, so shout out to her. <laughs> yeah, Hi, um, Bebby. <laughs> yeah, she allowed me and Anson to um, progress this far. Right. Right. So that's really an amazing opportunity that you had. Um, are you planning on now uh, attending more sort of events or maybe competitions or something? Um, yes, there is also another competition in the summer, which is called EICON. Yeah. And it's what this, is it? Oh, it's an app building competition where an app building yes. competition. Wow. So where teams across the globe come to. This year it's held in Hawaii. So teams across the globe, like Korea, Great Britain, come to here to University of Hawaii where we have teams set up to code for an app that could change, possibly change the world. So basically, um, you learn uh, how to create an app, yes. and then you compete. So you're going you're gonna to represent Hawaii. Uh, yes. That's fantastic. And so w when is this exactly? Um, summer, June. June, June, in June, yes. okay. And it's held at the University of Hawaii. Yes. yes. Wow. So what are your expectations for this big event now? <laughs> um, uh, so, um, we never really um, been in this competition before, but um, we hope we learn as much as they do because um, the way the competition works is that um, we um, interact with the Korean people 
And or, uh, yeah. or yeah. the international or, yeah. other <laughs> teams from <laughs> other countries. We interact with them, and then we also team up with them. So okay, yes. so it's a, it's a it's a team effort as yes. well. Wow. Okay. And so is there? A, so you are the you are part of the team for from uh, uh, Kwananakoa Middle School or? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, we, How many other people are in in the team? Uh, so there's um two um one more other team. So there's me and Anson as one team, and there's one more team. So okay, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we pair up with an, another team of two to create a team of four, and then we compete against other teams. So far in Hawaii, we have 25 other teams that would pair up with other teams. Wow. So do you have any idea for the next uh, world changing app or? Um, so okay. our idea for an app is to create this weather tra weather and storm tracking system that would alert other people in case it would um, find their location on Earth and then around the surrounding area where what kind of storms would happen, what kind of disasters could happen, and we could warn them if it happens. And that's also something very useful. We heard, we all heard the news about what's happening with in the lower East Rift Zone on the volcano oh, yes. uh, with Leilani Estate and the eruption which is going on there. So, are you uh, thinking of including? Uh, um, not only weather-related disasters, but also other kind of, uh, uh, yes. such as volcanoes yes. or earthquakes. Um, um, add all kind of geography um, um, disasters that are going to happen. Right. Or, or like um, in like the North Korea attack, we can um, also warn them against that. But we can also give safety precautions to um, what to do in that. That's going to be incredibly yes. useful. And, and your experience that you have with Arduino uh, and this work that you did for the state fair is certainly going to be, you know, helpful a lot. Yeah, it's really going to be okay. And um, are you uh, are you planning on going back to the state fair, the science fair? Uh, again next year for oh, oh yes we'll try our best to make it to states okay yeah. are, are you gonna are you gonna um, improve on these prototypes that you built or some totally um, new <laughs> because um now since that me and Anson have um, a professor to work with um, whatever project idea he is we can influence it, it into our own ideas and um, use it for our next project. And actually, we have uh, your, one of your professors here, uh, uh, science professors here. Uh, hi, Sam. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. And, 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 and so this is going to be also amazing because uh, you're also going to have expertise, such as uh, Sam, for example, who are really you know, uh, willing to help for this. Uh, um, and how do you see uh, yourself in the future, really? You know, with this uh, you know, learning, uh, coding, Arduino, learning how to create apps, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in middle school is amazing because it really gives you, it, it really opens a lot of door uh, for you in the, in the future. So do you have any ideas for what you, you know, will be doing in the... Um, as of now, I've been trying to explore as many areas of science as possible. Wow. But, but in the future, I would like to see myself in the medical field as a... In the medical field, yeah, yeah, okay. And this is really, yeah, something useful as well for, yeah. And you well, have a... Um, I, I have like the same thing as Anton. I want to become a, a doctor in the medical field in the future. You, 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 you all like science anyway. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how, uh, how, you know, we talked about this uh, Arduino, these science projects. And how do you actually, how did you get involved in the first place with the Hawaii State, uh, the fair, and all this? How did you, is that your, is that the love of, of, for science which uh, has, yeah. you know, brought you here? Or? Um, so, we both have a passion for science, but then, um, over last year in summer school, we had our teacher told us we could try science fair, and then because it was a requirement in middle school, so we wow. thought we could come up with this idea, and then we came up with this idea of Arduino and okay. electronics to integrate into the science fair. Yeah, and, and so it was a teacher and experience that yes. you had in middle school. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, now you mentioned uh, for this uh, competition that you are going to. This is going to be something really exciting because you're going to be uh, basically compete, but also learn uh, with uh, inter international inter an international group of people. Um, but you gave us some details about uh, how it works and everything. But uh, are, are you also going to be like uh, taking some classes to get ready for this event, or? or? 
um, in the How does it actually um, work? Yeah, yeah. So in order to prepare for the competition. That's right, yeah. Um, teams are expected to learn on their own with the help of teachers, of course, but then... Oh, okay. Uh, so once so. you get to the competitions, so are they also going to be uh, doing you some training or...? Um, so um, um, the other teams, they're going to... Um, um, they're gonna, we're gonna train with them, and we're gonna see um, which one of us can code better. And um, the ones that can code better will be the ones to code the actual app, and the the ones that um, that um, and the other um, ones they will um, be the one to present the entire app to the world. So how different is uh, app coding from? Uh, for example, Arduino, which is what we talked about today. So Arduino codes in C or C++. Yeah. But when we make apps, it's just a different language we have to learn. But it's ultimately, we're still coding. It's still the same. What's the language that you're going to be using for, uh, for the apps? So we have to display these apps on the Google Play Store. Right. So then Google Play Store, most apps use Java. So that's what we would... Oh, so, OK, so you're going to... So, um, so you learned C++ and C, how to code with Arduino. Mm -hmm. well, what about Java then? This is a, you said it's a total yeah. different language. Yeah. yeah. We, so we don't, we don't have much knowledge into it, but um, we can learn. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> but we can learn more about it to prepare for, for, the, comp, for the future competition. And, yeah. Because this is coming up soon. It's in June. So yes. wow. OK, that's going to be exciting. That's going to be exciting for you, you know, to, to, to attend this. And um, so. Um, what are your, uh, uh, you know, career path uh, for the future? You mentioned uh, maybe medical school. Do you think uh, what you're doing now, this uh, app uh, or hazards, this is going to be something uh, that you can carry out to the next level, to the next uh, education uh, level that you're going to uh, be challenged with? Or uh, yes, because on um, technology, it, it kind of has science within it. So as you know more about um, technology, we can um, introduce higher levels of technology to, that we can use in science to um, figure to, to explore more parts of the world without um, in like safety hazards for health as well as yes. you mentioned. Wow. Okay. So um, speaking of this, um, how um, we have. We have about uh, uh, one minute left today right. for this uh, conversation that we're having. Um, you mentioned a lot of things, uh, coding, uh, Arduino. Uh, can you maybe, uh, Anson, summarize a little bit the implications, for, uh, the, the results, what you learned, and what for the future for this uh, particular very powerful board called Arduino in this technology. So the world we live in today is filled with continuous technological advancement. So then because of this increase in technology, we also, we sh it's only right that we learn about it. We have, because we, all, we are always staring at our cell, cell phones. It's also, we also should look into what makes it work, the science behind everything, because that is very important. Wow, okay. Thank you very much for being here, Anson. Oh, thank you for thank being you. here. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, so you've been watching at Young Talents Making Way only here on FinTech Hawaii. We'll be back next Tuesday with more science, more discoveries, and more future. Stay tuned.